snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Say, have you ever known people who somehow were always in hot water? Oh, nothing serious, but, well, they're just a little bit on the daring side. They think after it's too late. Some folks call them foolhardy. Others call them a nuisance. Nevertheless, it seems that this type of individual pulls one harebrained stunt after another. And that's a perfect description of Norman Marx. He never took anything serious, never had an ounce of responsibility in his blood. Then suddenly, Norm got into more trouble than a barrel of monkeys. And here's how it happened. Listen to the story of The Reckless Driver. Two young fellows, Norman Marks and his friend Jack Sanders, are just about to leave for Canyon City. Jack is a quiet fellow, much more conservative than Norm, and as they stand talking, it's plain to see that Jack is a little worried. Norm, do you really think we ought to drive to Canyon City tonight? Well, sure. Why not? Well, it's darker than the inside of a closet. I've got good lights on the car. What more do we want? Oh, but these, these mountain roads, they're hard to drive at night. What's the matter, Jack? You scared or something? Well, no, but along the way you drive, I... Now you're talking like my folks. You don't have to go if you don't want to. Oh, no, it's not that. But... Okay, then. Jump in and we'll be on our way. All right. I wish you'd keep this crate down to driving speed for a change. <laughs> you think we're going to take off and fly, huh? Sometimes I think so. Don't worry. Everything's under control. Let's go. Oh, I'm coming, Bill. Just a sec. What's keeping you? Oh, the zipper in my jacket stuck. Well, fix it in the car. Well, what are you in such a big rush to get to Canyon City for? Mitch Freeman's there, Henry. I've got to talk to him before he goes east again. Well, you pick a nice, dark night to go over the mountains. Oh, so you don't trust me. He's an old classmate of yours, isn't he? Old? How old do you think I am? <laughs> well, get in the car, will you? Okay. Get your zipper fixed yet? Nope. Now my shirt's stuck in it, too. Oh, Henry, a fine mechanic you'd make. Oh, don't be picky -unish. All I need now is a left-handed screwdriver. Hey, Norm, take it easy, fella. You're not on the salt flats. Ah, there you go, worrying again. I've got the car under control, haven't I? Oh, I hope so. Hang on to your seat. I'm going to take the shortcut. Oh, it's all right with me to keep that heavy foot off the gas. I'm going to slow down on this road, Jack. Honest? Honest. Too many sharp turns? Yeah. And believe it or not, I'm not going out of my way to meet an accident. Hey, you, you really did slow down, didn't you? You said it first, Jack. We're not on the salt flats. Hey, Bill, are you taking the shortcut to Canyon City? Yeah, not a bad road if you take it easy, Henry. No, and it knocks off about ten miles. Right. It's only an hour's drive this way. <sighs> well, wake me up when we get there, will you? <laughs> sure, if we don't hit a bump first. <laughs> So there's the situation. Two young fellows easing along at a moderate speed without a care in the world. And two rangers on an errand of business taking the shortcut through the mountains. Unknown to any of them, about half a mile, a mile along the Canyon City Road, there's been a rock slide. And two state troopers, Neil Crown and Harry McCormick, have set up a barricade 300 feet in front of the slide. The two troopers are standing a lonesome night watch nearby. Ah, oh, this fire feels good, Harry. Yes, it does. 
I wouldn't be surprised if we got snow sometime tonight. Uh, it certainly feels like it, doesn't it? Well, the moon will be up in a couple hours. It'll be a little more cheerful. Yeah, if it weren't for the fire, you can hardly see your hand in front of your face. That's for sure. Say, I wonder how many cars ever take this road at night. You know, I've been thinking the same thing. Pretty dangerous, if you ask me. Yeah, sure is. Swinging around these hairpin turns, your headlights don't do you much good. Hey, what do you know? A customer. Yeah. Maybe we'll have somebody to talk to. Mm. We'll have to go back, that's sure. Uh, I'd better check the lantern. Well, be careful of that thing, Neil. Might blow up on you. <laughs> That'll be one way to get warm, huh? Yeah. Now, let me walk out there with you. Nothing else to do. Well, the lantern's okay. You should be able to... Neil! Neil, look out! Neil! <laughs> Somebody. What are you talking about? Hey, kid, what's, what's, what's the idea? No, no. You hit a state trooper. There he is on the ground. Hey, Bill. There's a car ahead of us. I just saw his lights hit the rocks as he went around the bend. Yeah, I saw him too, pal. About half a mile ahead. Traveling at a pretty safe speed, I'd say. Oh, well... Wake me up when we get to Canyon City. Oh, don't tell me that, Henry. You're too nosy to sleep, and you know it. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. Say, uh, what hotel did Mitch put up at? What hotel? Didn't know there was more than one in Canyon City. Well, there are two of them now. Huh? Since when? Boy, I see. You don't keep up on the latest news. It was in the paper. Where? <laughs> Down at the bottom of the third page, about three lines. Oh, <laughs> I only read the big print. Oh, I see. Oh, here's that bend. I saw that car go around. It's probably gone around six more since then. Yeah, I suppose so. Hey, Bill, look out! Huh? Hey, get out, pal. There's something wrong up there. Yeah. It looks like an accident. Hey, Bill, there's a man lying on the ground. That car must have run over him. Great Scott. It's a trooper. Hey, will you fellas give me a hand? My partner, he's, he's hurt badly. Sure. Hey, it's Harry McCormick. I'm Bill Jefferson. Why am I glad to see you? Uh, who is it on the ground, Harry? Neil Crown. Oh. You give Neil first aid, Harry. Henry and I'll rig a stretcher. Okay. Keep your eye on those two roughnecks, will you? A tall one is the fellow that ran Neil down. <laughs> Just a little bit more. That's it. That's good, fellas. Be sure the stretcher is resting squarely in back. Boy, that wasn't easy, putting it over the top of the seats. Yeah, the it's pretty heavy. Oh, where are those two lads? They're standing by their car, waiting. Hey, you two. Come over here. Yes, sir. Get in the front seat of the ranger's car. What do you want us to do? You fella are under arrest. Reckless driving. And your friend is a material witness. Under arrest? I didn't even see the other trooper or the barricade either. Ah, yeah, the judge will like that story. He's right, officer. I didn't see him either. Norm wasn't driving fast. Oh, you two have your story all set, haven't you? Harry, we better save this for later. Neil needs to be taken to a hospital. Right. Let's go. You and Henry sit in the back seat, keep Neil from rolling off the stretcher. You two lads get in the front seat with me. Okay, hop to it. Those two young whippersnappers got themselves into deep water this time. Of course, you might know it would be with Norman around. Uh, Norman plenty careless. Never listen to advice. Always take chance. Now he wished maybe he listened. That's right, Grey Wolf. The funny part about it is that when we saw the... Hey, Bill. Here comes Harry. How's Neil, Harry? Yeah, that's a good condition critical, they say. I'm sure sorry to hear that. Did they say what chance he has of making the grade? Well, doctor says he's got a 50-50 chance to pull through. Mm. Where is he injured the most, Harry? Uh, it's his chest, Bill. It's crushed. 
Man, that's serious. Yeah, you're telling me. You leaving, Harry? Oh, there's nothing I can do at the moment. I'm going to file my report. I'll be back in a little while. What are you charging Norman Marks with, Harry? Reckless driving. And if Neil dies, it's manslaughter. Well, it looks like Norm's in for it. The report that State Trooper Harry McCormick's going to file is pretty serious. Right now, let's visit Norm at the Knotty Pine Jail, where he's being held until the judge sets bond for his freedom. Norm's dad and a lawyer are talking to the lad. His friend Jack is there, too. Norman, this is Alfred Cassidy, lawyer. He's going to try to defend you in court. Hello, Mr. Cassidy. Hello, Norman. Dad, you talk like I'm guilty of this. I don't know whether you're guilty or not. But I do know that you've scoffed time and again at any advice I've given you about being more careful. Now, here we are again. Well, honest, Dad, I didn't see the trooper or the barricade. Ask Jack. Oh, that's right, Mr. Marks. We were on top of him before we could see a thing. I'd like to believe that, but I, I just can't. Now, listen, all three of you. I don't want any of you to talk to a soul about the accident until I'm ready for you to talk. I want to get all the facts first. You can talk about anything else, but not about the accident, understand? We want Norman to be protected as fully as the law allows. Mm, that's okay, right. Mr. Sure, Cassidy. Of course. I'd like to have a word with you privately, Mr. Cassidy. Certainly. We can talk in the sheriff's office. See you in the morning, Norman. You too, Jack. Okay. Uh, Good night. Good night, sir. Tell me, uh, what's your candid opinion, Mr. Cassidy? Well, uh, without all the facts at hand, I can't give you a straight answer, Mr. Marks. However, I have read the report of the arresting officer. Yes? Circumstantial evidence is all against your boy. Whoa, Storm. Take it easy, big boy. We'll hit the trail soon. You fellas about ready? Well, easy does it, uh, Bess. Stand still. Oh. Uh, I'll be ready in a second, Bill. Say, I'm wondering how Norm's making out. I don't know. I talked with the sheriff last night. Looks like Norm's in a bad spot. Tilde! Slap her on the ground! You step on my foot, I'll give you a fat eye. That young fella didn't have a reputation for being such a reckless scallywag. He'd be a lot better off now. Folks are against him. Ah, you speak truth. Many people in town say he at last get what he asked for. The question is, is he really guilty? Guilty? What else could he be, Sonny? Harry's a good trooper and he saw it all. He wouldn't lie about a thing like that. Yeah, I know, but do you think Harry might have stretched a point or two because his partner got hurt? Not Harry. He always fair. Well, it's too bad, but there's not much we can do about it. It's out of our hands. Let's go, fellas. Get him up, Come on, Storm. Come on, hit up, Billy. Hello, Mr. Cassidy. Did you find out anything that will help me? Good morning, Norman. Jack, Mr. Marks. Good morning, sir. Uh, Norman, are you sure you told me the truth? On my word of honor, Mr. Cassidy, I have. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason I ask is because a lie won't do you a bit of good. Uh, what do you mean by that, Mr. Cassidy? Well, Mr. Marks, I've read and reread the arresting officer's report of the accident. And I myself went to the scene of the accident. Well, what did you find out? Somebody's not telling the truth. You were telling the truth, Norman? Dad, uh... I know I've been wrong in the past. I know I've told some wild stories. But this time I'm telling the truth. Even if I were standing before the Lord, I would say the same thing. I didn't see Officer Crown or the barricade. That's the truth. And on my word of honor, I say the same thing. Yeah. All right, son, I believe you. Well, there's only one thing we can do. 
and that's to find some evidence that's been missed. I think I'll start at the hospital. <laughs> Uh, you say it won't be possible to talk to Officer Crown for several days, Doctor. Well, that's right, Mr. Cassidy. You see, his condition hasn't changed. He's hanging between life and death. We've got a 24-hour watch on him. I hope he pulls through for his family's sake and for Norman's. He still has only a 50-50 chance. Oh, um... Here comes his partner, Trooper McCormick. Yes, I know, Harry. He's taking this pretty hard. Yes, the men have worked together for many years. Hello, Doc. Mr. Cassidy? Good morning, Hello, Harry. McCormick. How's Neil, Doc? Still the same, Harry. When's the crisis? Probably around noon tomorrow. All right, see. Mr. Cassidy, I hear you're defending young Marks. That's right, Harry. Don't you think you're wasting your time? No, I don't think so. Else I wouldn't be on the case. Well, I'm going to see to it that the judge throws a book at that young fellow. And it's my job to see that he gets the protection of the law to the full. Yeah? Well, the evidence proves that he's guilty. Circumstantial evidence, yes. I'll admit to that. But somewhere an important piece of evidence has been missed. I believe Norman's telling the truth. You believe Norman Marks? You know what his reputation is? Yes, I do. And I also know that there comes a time when everybody does tell the truth, Harry. I'll see you before the judge in the morning. Right. I sure hope the judge refuses bail. And lock up that young fellow and throw the key away. <laughs> Case is the state versus Norman Marks. Oh, yes. Uh, is the attorney for the defense here? I'm the attorney for the defense, Your Honor. Oh, yes, Mr. Cassidy. Well, on looking over the evidence available, I'd say the state has an airtight case against this lad. I set his trial one week from Monday. What is the bail to be posted for my client's freedom until the trial, Your Honor? I'm sorry, there won't be any bail, Mr. Cassidy. If it pleases the court, I'd like to set the trial date sooner. A request denied. This court wants to wait until it is known whether Trooper Crown will live or die. It really looks like Norman's going to get the book thrown at him, doesn't it? Now let's catch up with Bill and the fellows. They're heading back to town after being out on the trail several days. Well, I'm glad we're going back home, Bill. I'm anxious to find out how Norm's making now. I've been thinking a lot about him. So have I, pal. The Lord's really put Norman on my mind. And that must be right, because we head for a place where accidents take place. I was just going to say the same thing, young feller. Why are you heading for the Canyon City Road, Bill? I want to take a look at the scene of the accident. You saw it before, didn't you? I want to look again, Henry. And Harry's report gives all the facts, doesn't it? Presumably, yeah, but I want to recheck them. You mean Harry may have stretched a point or two? I don't mean that at all, pal. There's something has been bothering me. Ah, now he tell us, maybe. Now we know something was on your mind by the way you acted. Do you think some important facts have been left out of the picture, Bill? Well, I don't know. Let's wait until we get there and take a look. Then I'll be able to tell. Well, what's the one thing that keeps bothering you, Bill? Well, it's this. Harry, Norman, and Jack were all involved in the accident. They all seem to be telling the truth. And why does Norman and Jack's story differ so radically from Harry's? Ah, that's plenty hard to tell. Well, that's why I'm going there, to find out. After we stop at the scene of the accident, we'll head back home. Well, it's sure good to be home again. Oh, the place looks the same. Yep, except for that fella sitting over there in the corner. Ah, him not here when we leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Cassidy. Hello, Henry. Howdy, Mr. Hello. Cassidy. Hello, Al. 
You can tell these fellas haven't been working very hard. They're full of monkey business. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that you fellows always seem to be able to laugh, no matter how serious the situation is. I wish I could do that. You can, Al. I can? <laughs> What's the secret? No secret. You just put complete trust in the Lord and let him work things out according to his plan. Uh, yes, uh, yes, I see him. Well, I hope this formula you have works out for what I'm about to ask you. Go ahead and ask, Al. I'll do the best I can. That's right, Al. We've got a motto around here. The difficult things we do ourselves. But only the Lord can do the impossible. So we give that to him. Yes, well, I'm afraid that I'm going to ask the impossible. Well, let's hear it, Al. Yeah, yeah, tell us, Al. Can you help me find evidence that will prove Norman Marks innocent of these charges? Uh-oh. Yes, Al? I can give you evidence that will clear Norman. Well, what, Bill? Oh, tell us. Hey, you close like. your tater traps. Let Bill and Al talk. Well, Bill, you, you wouldn't joke with an old friend on something as serious as this. Have I ever, Al? No, but, uh, well, are you sure? Don't build up our hopes unless you are. Will it stand up in court? It'll stand up in court. Only I want to get this over with before the trial. What can I do to help, Bill? Bring Norman, Mr. Marks, and Jack out to the scene of the accident right after dark this evening. I'll bring Harry McCormick and the rest of my boys. Okay, we'll be there, Bill. <laughs> Maybe Harry's over at the hospital, Bill. He's there, Henry. McCormick speaking. Harry, this is Bill. Oh, how are you, Bill? Nice to hear your voice. How's Neil? Well, I'm glad to say he's improving. He passed the crisis. Doc said he'll be off the critical list in a day or two. Oh, that's wonderful. Harry, will you take a ride with me out to the scene of the accident right after dark? Why? Has Cassidy got you in on this, too? I told him he couldn't get Mark off this time. The judge will throw the book at him. You still haven't answered my question, old boy. I don't see why it's necessary to go through the whole thing again. What's the purpose, anyhow? To prove Norman innocent. What? Man, either you're joking or else you're out of your mind. Neither, Harry. What do you say? Uh, I don't think so, Bill. Just a waste of time. As a personal favor? Well, all right, Bill, I'll do it. Thanks, Harry. I'll pick you up in about 45 minutes. Okay, Bill, I'll see you then. Well, the barricade's set up just like it was the night of the accident, Bill. All right. The lantern's just like it was then? Uh, yeah. The barricades in the same place, Harry? Exactly the same place, Cassidy. You sure? Positive. Norman, Jack, can you come here, please? Yeah, come, Bill. sure, Bill. How fast were you going down this road, Norm? About 35 miles an hour. Not any faster. You agree, Jack? Well, yes, Bill. I remember Norm and I talked about reducing speed on this road because of the bad turns. Mm -hmm. Harry, will you take my car and go back down the road about half a mile? and drive up to the barricade like you think Norman did? Yeah, I'll be glad to, Bill. Hey, Bill, what are you up to? <laughs> You'll see when Harry drives the car up to the barricade. Are you sure this is going to prove something, Bill? Just be patient. drives the car a half mile down the road. Turns around and starts back toward the barricade. Harry watches the speedometer to be sure he's going the same speed that Norman did. Meanwhile, Bill hears the car approaching and he walks out in front of the barricade 
stoops down over the lantern just as Neil did when Norman was driving. Suddenly, the car rounds the turn. Bill still crouched over the lantern. Henry yells. Look out, Bill! Bill suddenly stands up right in front of the approaching car. Great Scott, Bill. I almost ran over you. What? Didn't you see me crouched over the no, light? No, I didn't see you or the light. Didn't you see the barricade? No. Well, neither did Norman. What? I... Bill, I... I've made a terrible mistake. Norman couldn't possibly have seen Neil. Why not, Harry? Why, the car was coming slightly up grade around the turn, and, and Neil was covering the lantern with his body. Norm, I... I'm terribly sorry. I, I've done you a great injustice. I can see now this was purely an accident. You're innocent. I withdraw the charge. <laughs> Well, I've learned a lot, Bill. This experience has knocked some seriousness into my head. You don't know how grateful I am for what you've done. And that goes for me, too, Bill. Thanks so much for helping us. I'm the one who's more grateful than anybody. I unknowingly accused an innocent man. I wish I could make this up to you some way, Norman. I think you and Norm are even, Harry. Well, how do you mean, Bill? Well, even though this has been a rugged experience, Norman's learned he's got to be responsible and protect his reputation. And you've learned that circumstantial evidence can be wrong. Oh, well, you can say that again. Tell me, Bill, how did you figure this out? Well, the contradiction between your stories really disturbed me, Harry. Then I remembered that when Henry and I drove up, I had to slam on my brakes rather hard. And the taillights from Norm's car were on then. That started a chain reaction. Then Al came to see us, so I thought we would try out my idea. Mm-hmm, a great piece of deduction. <laughs> I gotta hand it to you, Bill. <laughs> you must have uh, some kind of a secret formula for this. No, no secret formula, Al. It's the Bible which all men can read. Whenever I get a tough problem, I remember Proverbs 3, 5. Yes, what's that? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Bill certainly has a good formula, as Al Cassidy calls it. It's a verse of scripture that all of us should use more often. And certainly Bill proved that facts can give us the wrong picture unless we have all of them. We'll see you next week for more adventure with... Ray!